funeral home here in New Hamburg and uh, like it was it was just like being in hell like I mean how what am I doing here partying in a funeral home and there's guys walking around and stoned on drugs and drinking and that I guess it was a couple weeks later after like after that funeral home thing I was sitting in the hotel and as I was sitting there I had I'd say one or two beers and I had the weirdest feeling I, I just felt like I was gonna die and uh, right now, I know, I know what it was. I believe that God sent his death angel. And I believe that death angel was right beside me in the hotel. And I, I really feel that he was going to kill me. I, really, I, I, I could just hardly believe that I even said that. You know, like before, I would have thought, what? I'm going to die? I'm going to die? Because before, I was so afraid of death. But now, I'm not afraid of death because I know and when these eyes close and they open again, I'm going to see my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, stand there and say, unless I've been waiting for you. It's not the way that you say it when you do those things to me. It's more the way you really mean it when you tell me what will be. I'm looking for someone to change my life I'm looking for a miracle in my life And if you could see what it's done to me To lose the love I knew Safely see me I'm right, right now, uh, I got a 53 Indian up your store right now Really? Oh yeah I, I just I just want to be myself. Like I don't want to get up there and, and people say, well, you know, who's he who's he trying to glorify himself or Jesus Christ? Like even just down here and talking to different people. I met one young fellow down here today and he said that he had an out-of-the-body experience, overdose on drugs and that. I was witnessing to him. And it says that we're to go into the world and preach the gospel. And that's 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 what I'm here for. And it says that uh, uh, to give our testimony, which I like doing. I remember up in Woodstock and all over the place where we were giving our testimonies, and that's how I proclaim the gospel. I know a lot of really hard bikers. You know, they're really rugged looking on the outside, but you know those guys would bend over backwards for you. They would bend over backwards. They, they just got a good heart. Like, you know, when Jesus Christ came here, you know, it says that he came to bring the sinners to repentance, right? And that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be going down there, you know, and saying, hey, I love you, man. Can I help you? How many people say, like, like, like when something's happening, they say, well, where are the Christians? Where are they? And who's bothering with them? Hardly anybody. Amazing me, and just I know Dave. You saw Dave at the end of the movie there. Like uh, that was amazing doing that and being in the Christian Riders. That's that's who I am, you guys. That's who I am. I love motorcycles. I rode since I was like 16 years old, and uh, I'm not telling you all that now. Uh, 21. <laughs> oh, you. Anyway, guys. Uh, the Lord has got a lot for you guys today. Like, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed all this, all this month. And I'm saying, God, bring who you want there and keep back who you don't want there. And like, John, he kept saying, left, 150, 150. 
You know, and God is a big God. We've got to believe in Him for big things in our lives. That's right. Amen? So this is amazing how you guys are here. And you know, like I said, God's got something good for you. I'm going to take you. Uh, and I asked John how much time I got. He said three hours. No. <laughs> no. I'm going to take you from the dark side into the light. I think it's uh, a verse, uh, I think it's uh, uh, Colossians 1.13. He has delivered me from the power of darkness and translated me into the kingdom of his dear son. And man, I'm just so glad that I know Jesus today. I am, and I'm just, like, I, get, I get so excited. Like sometimes, you know, Rob probably goes nuts too. I'm in church, I can hardly contain myself. Well, honestly, guys, I'm going to go. Uh, it was drugs, alcohol, and violence. It was my whole life. Uh, I was bullied as a young boy. Uh, lots of rebellion as a teen. We're getting a ring back here. You got that crap? Okay. Lots of rebellion as a teen. Uh, I went to Sunday school. I went to church with mom and dad at uh, United Church in New Hamburg. That's why I said, Rob, our testimony is a lot of life. <laughs> uh, I remember the other, well, been a couple of years ago, and Molly was looking in the drawer, and she found this little New Testament in there. And it had my name in there, and it was way back when I was a young kid. And I guess I'd given my life to Jesus in Sunday school. So, uh, yeah, that just, that just amazed me. In fact, I just wrote that in here last night. Uh, I opened up to drugs, alcohol, uh, violence uh, in my teens. I like drinking. Uh, I always like to party. I mean, wherever there's somebody spin on the sidewalk, like, hey, let's have a party, man. Let's go. Uh, lots of fighting, lots of violence. Uh, I had my nose broke four times. Uh, I was in a street gang called the Golden Commandos. I don't know, Gordy. Gordy Rule. Do you remember the Golden Commandos, Gordy? Out Shade Street? George Thomas was the cop then? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't like us, guys. He didn't like us. But I remember the one time we were at the clubhouse. This is, you go out Shade Street, okay, you're going across the, the wooden bridge, yeah. And then there's two big pillars there. You ever, anybody ever see that? Okay, the clubhouse was back there, and one of the guys came back. We, had been, we were drinking back there. This wasn't more setting. This was street game. It was wild. And they said, uh, hey, there's a bunch of cars cruising around out front. You know what? They were looking us over. They were looking us over. That's how wild we were, okay? So we had a little party with them that day too, but it wasn't no fighting, but they were looking us over. Anyway, uh, I got into a motorcycle gang. Well, I bought a BSA, a 1961 BSA. I got into a motorcycle, motorcycle gang called the Voodoo Kings, okay? And like, we thought up names, and we, like, you know, I, the more evil something was, and the more wilder it was, that's what I wanted all that. I wanted that evil stuff. And you know something? Uh, Satan's choice also came down and they wanted us to join them, okay? We parted with them probably two or three times. Uh, you okay there, Kel? <laughs> I thought somebody's for me there. <laughs> Are we all right? Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, anyway, I wanted to get in the choice. I, I really wanted to get in Satan's choice. And the, our club folded. And I found out later there's some ladies in New Hamburg that have been praying for us. But I wanted to be in choice. No, I really did. And from, from uh, the Voodoo Kings, I, I got into drugs then, but a lot of the guys, there was different guys left, and probably different ones you hear now. I've heard of the henchmen. Okay, uh, in fact, uh, Corey's uh, pastor, Dale Hoke, is an uh, ex-henchman. Okay, and I knew a lot of them guys, but I sold my bike and everything, and I got into the drugs. Uh, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, didn't uh, think much about looking clean. Uh, wanted to look wild and tough. I had a pair of jeans that probably could have walked across the street on their own. Uh, I mean it, I mean it, you guys. Like, when we were around, like, we, we, we actually, we smelled, okay? And that was, that was a big thing for us. Like, you're just looking wild and tough. I'm serious. Now it's, it's a different thing now. Uh, I got into uh, marijuana, 
mescaline, hashish, LSD, you know those drugs, Rob. And I got pretty messed up. Uh, and the one time, uh, I was in the New Hamburg Arena. And uh, my buddy Wildman, who has passed away now, we did a lot of drugs together. But wild man came in the arena and he says, hey, my nickname was Sammy. He said, hey, Sammy, I got a bottle of wine. I said, hey, man, let's drink it. He said, no, let's shoot it. And I looked at him. He said, you got the guts, man? I said, let's do it right now. He took me back out behind the arena. He flagged me up. He shot me up. I thought the top of my head was going to blow off. <laughs> you know, like, no, I'm, I, you know, honestly, you guys, like, this is the wild stuff. I just loved it. I loved it. I love doing that stuff. I could have died. I could have died. I didn't know how much he was shooting into me. Uh, another time, Wild Man and I uh, went into a dance. I hung around with him a lot. He was a little bit younger than me. And we were drunk, and we were denied entry into the dance. And uh, they called the police, and we got into a big battle with the police right out front of the New Hamburg Arena. And uh, they put us in the cruiser. They took us into jail in Kitchener. Uh, and uh, I remember being in jail there, and we had been drinking wine. Eh? Like, man, when you drink wine, you get really thirsty. Wow. So while I was on the one side of the other side, I said, man, you need water? He said, yeah, haven't you? And I said, no, not really. So after the garden, I'll bring you some water. Then he didn't bring me anymore. Man, I'm really thirsty here. So I looked at the toilet, and I thought, man, it's cold. <laughs> So I took the blanket in the cot and I just scrubbed it out. I went down, man, like an animal and I licked that water up. With just That's how low that the devil can take you. Okay? Like, and I'm thinking in my mind, oh man, wait until I tell the guys I was drinking out of a toilet. I thought that was really wild, eh? That was neat. Uh, I remember a wild man and I were downtown and I'm not trying to be smart sharing this stuff. I'm telling you where I came from. Okay, Wild Man and I were downtown, and uh, we were standing there against the building, you know, where the commercial is downtown there in New Hamburg. All of a sudden, I saw this OPP pull across the street. Wild Man looks at me, see, you got any warrants? I said, no, you didn't just know. Cop comes over to him and he said, uh, Leslie George Bowen. I said, yeah, you're under arrest. Thomas Dittmer, you're under arrest. I said, for what? He says, you'll see. They handcuffed us, put us in the cruiser, and... Uh, Something had happened a couple nights prior that a guy, we came out of the hotel in Bain and a guy tried to run us over, so uh, we went after the guy. And there was Butch Linder too. Uh, I don't know, uh, Greg, you got a picture of Butch there, Butch and I standing together? Oh, that's, no, Butch, yeah. I was in jail with him. And you want, I'm not kidding you, you think he's big there? This guy was like a transport truck. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, he was, he was like big and uh, the cops said they already had Butch Linder in jail. His uncle took him in, who was an auxiliary OPP. But I wanted to show you, too. Go back to the bike picture, Greg, of me. Yeah, there's where I came from, guys. That was me. Really a friendly-looking guy, eh? <laughs> no, honestly, I think I hated myself. Okay? But anyway, you can take that down. But, but anyway... Uh, yeah, so I guess Butch had grabbed the guy out of the car and uh, he did a little bit of beating on him and uh, we all got charged. We did two weeks in jail for that one. Uh, I bought another bike in uh, 1970, I believe it was. Uh, that was a uh, 1968 Triumph and I got that all done up. It was a nice looking bike. Like that thing, I just, I hated to part with that. Uh, now, I don't know how many young guys here get along with your dads. I did when I was a young guy. But when I got into the bikes and everything, dad and I didn't get along anymore. I could never do anything right for him. Never, ever. It was all, well, you didn't do this right, you didn't do that right. Uh, I remember the one night, and I came home, and I, Mom, I, I just, I love Dad, but I never got that love back. And Mom would always come up, and she'd say, ah, uh -uh, just be good now, just be good. I said, yeah, Mom, I will. But anyway, uh, I was drinking whiskey the one night. When I drank whiskey, I was like pure hell on wheels, believe me. 
And uh, I remember my dad, he said something to me at the table. And I said, what? And he said something again. And mom says, leave him alone. He's been drinking. And he said something again. And then I got up. And then he kind of just kind of pushed me a little bit. And I went like this. And I threw him up the door. And I went like this. He's, come on, big man, hit me. I said, so you can go downtown and tell everybody that your son hit you? I put my jacket on. I was wild. I went out the back and started my bike up. I brought it out front. I put it on the front lawn and I burned that lawn up like you, my dad was right on the front porch. I burned that lawn up like you wouldn't believe. He called the police, Jerry Minnie came down. One of the Hamburg cops, he said, Sammy, what are you doing? You can't do this. I don't care, I don't care what it is. You wanna arrest me, arrest me, I don't care. I didn't care, I didn't care. Anyway, I met Bonnie in 1972. What a good moment. What a good wife. Uh, I met her and we got married in August. That year, you know something? I went with so many women and jumping into bed and all this stuff like that with women. I could never trust anybody because I always got double crossed. But I knew there was something about Bonnie. It was different and she's, she's younger than I am. But we just hooked in and, and uh, I guess you would call it love at first sight. I was even going with another girl when I met her. And I asked her if she wanted to go for a ride. She goes, sure. So that was it. Anyway, uh, yes, I met Bonnie and uh, I had a record. Uh, mug shots, fingerprints, theft, assault, car theft, causing disturbance, resisting arrest, causing property damage. Uh, I remember the one night, one shots guys. And like I say, like, yeah, my whole life was partying. Petersburg, uh, okay, I don't know how many know where Tender Flush was. There's trucking there now, right? Uh, back in the back there, uh, there was a, an old house. One of my buddies lived there, uh, Tom Adenko and Larry and them real wild guys. I don't even know if they're with us anymore. I don't think Tom is. But anyway, this is getting close now uh, that, that I'm coming to the Lord, okay? There's things going on in my life. So I was sitting there and we we're drinking beer and I had the bike there and a lot of guys. And all of a sudden, man, this fog came out of nowhere. And I thought, what is going on here? Uh -huh. I looked at the guy and I said, man, does it usually get foggy like this? Or he's, oh, this is really weird. And it, 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 I didn't know God's voice, but it's like, <laughs> I had to get out of there. So I fired the bike up and I thought, man, I can't even see anything. So I'm going down the lane and you know what I did? I said, God, Get me home to Bonnie. Just get me home, Lord. Just get me home. And I started going down the driveway and I got out on the highway and I could see the white line. And I started to go and then I couldn't see anything. So I'm going down the road, going down the road. And then there was a merge out by Baden. It's not there anymore. When I came on that merge, I was on the wrong side of the road. If a truck or car would have came, I would have been like a hood on it. Like, I mean, I would have been dead. I would have been dead. Uh, I remember another night, I came home from the hotel. And uh, well, I says, what's wrong? And I, had, I, met, I got in a fight in the hotel and stuff. She says, what's wrong? I said, I feel like crying. She says, why don't you cry? And I said, how do you cry? How do you cry? You can see now, eh? <laughs> the floodgates, I, I couldn't cry. Because like, you're so tough inside and you're trying to show everybody, hey man, I'm not crying. Nobody's going to see me cry. Okay? And I had a lot, like a, a lot of anger. A lot of anger. Anyway, um, uh, just a minute, I think I missed, did I miss one? No. Oh, hold on. I got so much to say here. Anyway, uh, in uh, 1975, I had kidney surgery, major surgery. Uh, it was from the drugs and the booze and that. My kidney would blow up on the side, like you can probably see right here. Like I'm cut right from here to here, and like this side kind of sticks out a bit. Uh, and in 1970, 
Now, 74 had kidney surgery and then 75. And each time I would say to the doctor when he come in, hey doc, can I ask you something? Yeah, Les, what's going on? I said, when can I drink beer again? And Bonnie says, Hun, I was just ready just to grab you. And then the second time, the same thing. And she says, is that all you think about? And that's all I cared about. That's all I cared about. And then in 1976, this is when I got saved in 1976, I'll tell you about it right now. I had kidney surgery again, okay? And Bonnie, I remember her coming into the room the night before the surgery and she says, uh, hon, I gotta tell you something. And I knew the Lord then. And I said, what? She said, uh, the doctor doesn't know if you're gonna live or die. And I says, uh, you know, Bonnie? And I couldn't say it before, but I looked at Bonnie and I said, you know, Bonnie, I'm either gonna be here with you or I'm gonna be with Jesus. And Bonnie just looked, I could never say that before because I was so afraid of death. I was so afraid of death. But you know, when Bonnie came in that one time in uh, 75 there, and uh, when she came walking in, I felt something different about her. And I said, Bonnie, I said, what did you do? She says, what do you mean? I said, uh, I seem like a lion, light and darkness. She said, I called up to God last night. I said, what? She said, I called out to God. I said, Bonnie, you probably gave your heart to him. And she says, what's wrong? I said, I really feel different with you, Bonnie. I said, I said, you're over here and I'm over here. I said, man, this is different. This is different. Anyway, uh, I remember I come home drunk all the time. What else is new? Uh, Bonnie was always waiting, okay? She knew the Lord. And like I said, this was close to me being saved. Uh, she would read the Bible to me. And that's peace. I had that peace. I didn't even realize it. I didn't realize it. The word, the word of God was ministering to me. It says God's word will not return void, but it will accomplish what it's been sent out to do. Amen? Amen. And we learned scriptures. We learned scriptures. So God was working on the inside going out. I still hadn't changed. Uh, I remember another night. And like I say, I'm not being smart. I'm just telling you where I came from, guys. Uh, I was up to King Edward Hotel. That's uptown. That hotel isn't there anymore. It's been ripped down. Uh, who's saying that? Yeah, all right. And it's not there anymore. Anyway, um, there was uh, Rocky, Benj, a whole bunch of us guys. We were sitting there and we were drinking. We got pretty carried away. And I think Rocky got cut off. And the owner came up and he said, uh, Rocky, you cut off, you gotta leave. He said, I'm not leaving. And then there was trouble, and he said, I want all you guys to leave right now. We said, we're not leaving. They called the cops. The cops came in, and they're all around us. And they said, okay, guys, get up, you gotta leave. We're not leaving. So they started pulling our chairs and all this and that. And uh, this one cop was walking behind me, and he goes like this, and he shoved me. I just turned around, I said, don't shove me again, man. I said, get your hands off me. So I started walking, he shoved me again. I put my foot right through the plate glass window of the, of the, the hotel door there. And the cops were standing down. They said, you're under arrest, woman. I said, come and get me. I had such hell fury in me and bitterness and anger and like, you want to talk? Being possessed, I probably was. Because there was a lot of darkness in there. But anyway, the one cop, I think Bonnie even took, the, took a tie off the cops that night, pulled the tie, because the one cop was had me by the throat and that. But anyway, um, was it? Um, yeah, the one cop had me, and then he turned his flashlight around. He's going to hit me in the head. I said, don't do it, man. I said, leave me alone. I said, I'll go on the cruiser on my own. I think Benj was in on that, too. So we went in the cruiser, and I think I was charged for resisting arrest, uh, property damage, and a bunch of other stuff. So, but anyway, uh, yeah, that was that one. But then it was in... Uh, Just after that, in 1976, January, uh, Barney had a miscarriage. <clears throat> See, all this thing, guys, all this stuff that's going on, God's saying, hey, Les, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Is God speaking to you guys right now? Are you listening to God? Or are you 
you're going to keep playing around, guys. Like there's a heaven and there's a hell. Where do you want to spend eternity? He said he wants you either hot or cold. If you look warm, he said, I'll spit you out of my mouth. You're either going to walk with the devil or you're going to walk with Jesus. It's your choice, guys. It's your choice. Anyway, Bonnie had lost the baby, and she called the baby Noel. I just said to her this morning, I said, Bonnie, it was Noel, right? And she said, yeah. And I thought, you know, all the hell I put her through, I, I didn't hit her, but my mouth. How many of you guys right now, right now, are having problems with that stuff? Are having problems with your wife? Are having problems with your children? Something I didn't say either, guys. Have you hugged your kid today? Did you tell him you love him? I never had that. I never had it. You tell your wife you love her. And even children, like guys, kids, boys, whatever, teens, are you listening to your mom and dad? Or are you fooling around? Are you playing with drugs? Are you playing with porn? Are you drinking? Are you getting drunk? Are you jumping in the bed with every woman that you can find? God's challenging you today, guys. That's why you're here. You're here by divine appointment. Amen? Amen. You know something, guys? Going to a movie theater doesn't make you a movie star. Right? Just like going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Like so many guys... Yeah, man, he's so religious. You're religious, Sammy. You're religious. I said, no, I'm not religious. I said, I know Jesus. And I said, it wasn't religion that went to Calvary. His name is Jesus, the Son of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's who went to Calvary. I remember this. I believe the Lord gave me this the other day. Listen to this. If you were charged for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you. God, she got you. You know something? The Holy Spirit gave you that one. I said to Bonnie, listen to that. She heard me get that. I said, this came in my mind. Oh, man, awesome. Rob's going to use that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but isn't, isn't that something? You know, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Wow. Anyway, guys, we're getting into the good stuff here now. This is, we're coming out of the darkness. We're coming out of the darkness. Uh, yeah, I remember one night, too. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stay. On, oh, yeah, too. I had some friends, too. Well, lots of so-called friends. One guy carried a 38 pistol. Another guy was charged for attempted murder. Listen to this. One guy was charged with carrying a bull whip with flesh hooks in the end of it. And I thought, man, this is wild. This, I like this. I like this. And the one night I remember being in bed, we had just made a buy at the village in Tron. You remember the village? Huh? We made a buy of a weed, and uh, I didn't think any more of it. And that Sunday night, there was a phone call. It was me, Oz, and uh, Lightning. Lightning had the sash. And anyway, there was a phone call in the middle of the night, and next thing I knew, uh, get out of bed, punk, RCMP. Now, holy man, what's going down here? And he said, we know, we were following the other night. Well, we were in a mini Morris. We probably could have went down the sewer with that thing. You know? <laughs> but uh, anyway, we didn't know we were being followed. And mom and dad come into the bedroom, and mom looked at me, and she goes, I went, and then dad, he was just kind of shaking. I mean, I thought, Man, what am I putting my mom and dad through here? They went in the flower beds. They went, they searched everything. So before they left, mom gave them a tea. <laughs> so it ended good. It ended good. So, but anyway, uh, I did change my life. And I wanted to tell you something too. I'm going to tell you in case I forget about my mom and dad. Yeah, I did make it right with my dad. And I led them both to Jesus. I know you guys are thinking about that. 
call. I had to call you out. I had to call you out. I led them both to the Lord. I remember that. But anyway, 1976, August, it was a, it was a, I remember it was a really hot day. And I didn't have the bike there that day, and I was sitting with my buddy Luigi, who has passed away now, Italian guy. And yeah, it wouldn't be German, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, and we were sitting there, and honestly, man, I felt death all around me. And this is like, this would, this, you guys can't, can't even imagine it. And Luigi looked at me and said, like, you okay, Sam? He said, you don't look good. I said, no, no, Luigi, I'm okay. And I wasn't drunk or anything. I went to the bathroom, came back. I, bought some, I got some, some more booze, drank it. And then I, then I heard this voice. If you don't change your life, you're going to die. That was kind of mild. Then it was, if you don't change your life, you're going to die. I knew where I was. I, I knew... I knew, I knew I was at the crossroad. How many of you guys are there today? Has God been challenging you? Are you walking with Jesus? If you went out of here today and you died in a car accident, would you know that you'd go to heaven? You better make sure, guys. But anyway, as I sat in the hotel, I saw in my mind and I saw this, like an angel like this. And I thought, holy man. Like, uh, man, what's going down here? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I got a, a scripture about that about six months after that. Now listen to this. He was in there. He beareth not the, he's, he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is an avenger who bringeth wrath upon him that doeth evil. Was, that, was there an angel in there? Oh, yes, there was. But he rattled me, man. I'm telling you, I went out of that hotel. I ran home. Bonnie looked and she says, what's going on? And I said, uh, but she says, why are you home already? And I said, uh, I said, I think God was speaking to me. And she says, what did he say? I said, he told me if I don't change my life, I'm going to die. She says, what are you going to do? And I said, you know, Bonnie, I'm tired of warrants for my arrest and everything. I said, I'm going back in there. I knew what to do because I had been watching Billy Graham. I'd been listening to Earl Roberts. I remember Labe and I, we were sitting there the one day, and I think we were even drinking beer, and we were watching Billy Graham, and he said, don't tell anybody what we're doing. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, I knew what to do. And I went in, and I knelt by my bed, and I'm not kidding, I squeezed my hands so tight that they were like, they were white. And I said, Lord, whatever I've done, I ask you, God, to come into my heart. And to be my Lord and Savior, forgive me of my sins. And I'm not kidding you, man. When I did that, I felt this dirty garbage come right out of me. I felt it go right out of me. And I went out. And uh, Bonnie looked at me and she says, are you okay, hon? I said, I am now. And uh, uh, it was probably about 15 minutes. I said, yeah. It was the guys, both five of them on the bike. Hey, Sammy. Yeah, man. Uh, what's going on? Uh, we're going to have a party. You got to come out, man. We're going to have a really good one, man. I was, ah, I can't. Now, how many of you guys are ashamed of the Lord? Don't be ashamed of him, eh? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God and salvation. Let them not believe. Amen? Romans 1, 16. Don't be ashamed of the Lord. He wasn't ashamed of us to hang on Calvary. He wasn't ashamed. I'm losing my place here. <laughs> what was I to say? Five guys showed up. Yeah, thanks, thanks. For it. Yeah, so knocking the door, the five guys showed up. And they said, we're going to have a party. I said, I, I can't do it, man. Uh, like, why? I said, uh, I give my heart to Jesus. And they're like, what? I said, uh, I gave my heart to Jesus. You're nuts, man. You're going to want one of these Bible thumpers and all this? I said, I don't care, man. I said, we're all going to die someday. I said, I want to know where I'm going. Ah, uh, you're nuts, man. So they went out, and Bonnie and I went down, and they fired the bikes up, and they were looking at me. And uh, they says, come on, Sammy. You don't need this. You don't need this stuff. I said, no, I can't. 
ah, man. So they went out and they tore down the road. And I went out and right at the end of the drive of the Sun Hing Street, and I went and I stood there like this, and mine's beside me, and I went like this. And I watched the guys go down the highway, or the, down the road. And Bonnie says, you okay, hon? I said, man, this is different. All of a sudden, the scripture come into my mind. Uh, when you put your hands to the plow, don't look back. And I told Bonnie, and she says, you okay? I said, I am now. And you know something, guys? I turned around that day, and I walked away from hell. Amen. Amen. And, and you know, it's like God, you know, the instant I came to the Lord, it's like God allowed that test. Do you really mean it less? Or are you fooling around again? And that's what he's saying to you guys. Are you going to walk with Jesus or are you going to play? Or are you going to play around? Oh, a little bit of this. Oh, it won't hurt to talk up a little bit or do this. Or, oh, I can read the early magazines or porn. It won't hurt. Oh, yes, it will. I'll send you to hell. Anyway, when I did come to the Lord, uh, I remember I started my own Bible study. Uh, and I also was in the Christian Bikers. Uh, and I'm also a licensed minister. Amen. Yeah, there's, there's some of the guys. Uh, yeah, they're Christians. That's ICBA guys. Uh, Freddie on the right here. That's nice you put that up, Greg. Uh, yeah, Freddie on the right... Uh, used to be in the henchmen. And then uh, there's Amy way over there when she was little. And then there's Jim Postim with the guy with the big beard. They were, they were both ex-outlaw. And they pulled in the one day to see me. Hey, how's it going, Les? It's good. And you know something? Like, they're wild looking. But you want to talk about a heart for Jesus? Like these, you know, the one time I was, I was at home and I heard this like thunder come down the road. And there was about maybe five or six bikes and it was Harleys and they come in and, and uh, Hey, Les, how's it going? Through the helmets on. Let's go pray. <laughs> Not let's go get a case of beer, man. Eh? Let's go pray. And these real wild looking guys like this, you know something? You didn't see anybody out in the neighborhood. They're all indoors. <laughs> you know something? I forgot to read this before. Uh, a young man. A young, a young man who is wise obeys the law, but a son who is a member of a lawless gang is ashamed to his father. Proverbs 28, 7. And I was ashamed. I was ashamed to my, to my mom and to my dad, really. But, uh, yeah, I was a leader of a Bible study. I was in the Christian Bikers. Uh, we made the movie God Rides a Harley. It won the Genie Award for the Best Documentary. Uh, and, you know, I'm just going to share a little bit. I've got time here yet, eh? Like, good? Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Anyway, uh, there was a guy in my chapter. You'd remember him, Dave. Dave was, Dave was my vice president, Dave Worth. And remember George? Yeah. Remember his fingers? Yeah. He had little fingers. I don't even know how he could even turn the throttle on his bike. No, really. Like, his fingers were just like little. Like, he grew up like that. So we were up in, I think it was Wired, yeah. And... Uh, we were all put in different homes. Dave and I are with this lady, and just really nice people in that, eh? And uh, George says, I'm with these, this, this older man and this older lady. I don't want to go there, Russ. And I says, honestly, George, I said, don't grumble about it. I said, just go and do it. So anyway, George went in there and with these people and that, and he came into town the next day. He says, Les, Les, come here. I says, what? He's like, i got to tell you something. I said, what? He said, uh, he said, you know those people? I'm like, I said, yeah. And he said, they got a son. He's got fingers like mine. Isn't, like, honestly, you guys, like, I'm, I'm saying, like, God, you're, you're so real. You're so real. Like, I look in the sky at night, and I'm thinking, okay, God made this whole everything, right? And he came down as a servant, and he died for me. Honest, guys, I can hardly, I can hardly fathom us. Like, God Almighty. He came down because he loved me. He loved you guys. He died for you. And he's not dead anymore. He's sitting at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, making an intercession for all the saints and all the believers. He's praying for you guys. He wants you to know him. I'm going to tell you some more stories. Here's another one, guys. 
I was up on Hink Street the one day. That's where I lived and came out. And this Ray guy, he lived in the next apartment. Uh, and I was talking to Ray. He was working on his car. And I, said, I started talking about Jesus, eh? He said, Sammy, shut up. I don't want to hear it. I said, what? He said, shut up. I don't want to hear it. It's okay, Ray. You know what I'm saying, don't you, Dave? Yeah. yeah. So a few months later, Dave came up. I was on, on my front porch where I am different times, my office. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dave says, hey, lots, they can't find Ray. I won't say the last name. And I said, what's going on? He said, I don't know. He says, they don't know where he is. I said, well, let me know if you hear anything, eh? So uh, Dave came back, and he said, uh, Wes, they found Ray. I said, yeah. I said, where? He said, hanging in a tree outside of New Hamburg with a case of beer underneath me, hung himself. <laughs> he didn't want to hear it. Well, he hung himself with um, booster tables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember that day. Yeah. Yeah. But he didn't want to hear it, guys. So you, when you walk out of here today, you can never ever say to the Lord, I didn't hear about Jesus. Pardon? <laughs> yes, you did. Because he'll take you right to that place and show you the exact moment that you did hear about. Now listen to this one. I'm just trying to show you guys what goes on here. God had me get this stuff together this week. Another friend of mine, Murray. Murray Fry. Murray's gone now. Drank a lot of booze with him. I rode motorcycle. And man, you talk about drinking, man. That guy would get so loaded, like, unbelievable. They found him one night out in the cemetery sleeping on a gravestone. Like, and, and, you know, it sounds funny, but, I mean, he, he was just, like, it was, like, unreal. I told him about the Lord when I came to the Lord. And, by the way, too, I told all the cops that had arrested me, I told them about Jesus. And they said, well, it might be good for you, Sammy. Well, I told them anyway. But... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Murray, uh, I told him about the Lord. He said, Sammy, I don't need that. I don't need that. I said, hey, man, no problem. So I kept praying for him. I kept praying for him. The one day the phone rang. Hey, Sammy, it's Murray. I says, what's going on? We call him Friar, right? Murray Fry, Friar. I says, what's up, Friar? He says, uh, he says, I've been reading my Bible. I said, what? He said, I've been reading my Bible. He said, I found this old Bible. I said, what's going on? He said, oh, well, he said, you know, I went to see the Passion of the Christ. And I said, yeah. And he said, uh, he said, I, it got me so, he says, Linda was with me. And he said, I saw him when they were whipping and everything. He said, man, I started to cry. And Linda looked at him. Yeah, crying about Murray. He said, Linda, he did that for a drunk like me. He joined, and then Murray says to me, what do I do? I said, ask him in your heart, and he did. And I remember Murray in the, in the hospital, and Murray had this one kind of, he'd be looking at, you know, like this, you know? And he said, Sammy, I'm so glad I know Jesus. I said, I'm glad you do too, Murray. Yeah. But he passed away. You know, and there was, there was an, an older man. He'd come down our street all the time. His name was Mr. Dittmer. He was a Pentecostal guy. But he'd be, hallelujah. And I thought, man, I don't ever want to be like that. <laughs> I shouldn't even say that, right? <laughs> but you know, when I really came to know Jesus, and he said to me the one day, and he put his arm around me, he said, I'm so glad of us that Jesus came my way. Amen? I'm so glad that Jesus cared enough about a piece of garbage like I was and he came into the hotel and he said let's get it straightened around here get it straightened around there was another I was, I was speaking in the church uh, the missionary church Rob in uh, Plattsville and it was a men's uh, steak dinner <laughs> yeah we don't have that here <laughs> <laughs> move on that guys <laughs> Anyway, uh, this man in Plattsville uh, it was after we had eaten in that, and uh, after my testimony, he came up and he said, Les, I want you to meet this man here. And uh, 
I said, no, I said, what's going on, man? He said, I want to tell you something, Les, it just happened today. He said, I went over to get him. And he said he's had the pipe from his exhaust into the one room. He was going to kill himself. And I looked at the guy and I said, man, I'm so glad that you came. He said, I'm so glad that my friend asked me to come and hear you speak, Les. That's what I'm saying, guys. That's what I'm saying right now. You know, right now, honestly, you guys, when I look here, I see an army, an army of men, okay? And it says that the man is the high priest. It's up to you guys to be the high priest, to be the man of the house. That's where God's calling you guys today. Not fooling around, not playing around the poor, not drinking, not talking up. He's calling you to be the man of the house, the high priest. Amen? Amen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, Don. Uh, yeah. Um, I remember being at Turning Point. I don't know if you ever heard of that ministry. How many of you guys? Uh, Rock, did you? Uh, that's down by Fort Erie. And it's women, okay? Prostitution, uh, drugs, everything. And I'm not kidding you, man. I wish I would have had a picture of them here. But we went in there, and they'd make us guys food, and we would share testimonies back and forth. And I remember the one day I was out there, and this girl came out, and she's going like this on my motorcycle, on, the, on all the tanks. And I says, are you okay? And she says, I am now, Les. I said, what do you mean? She said, I was raped by a motorcycle gang. And I said, are you all right now? She says, yeah. She's just meeting you guys. She said, like, she had a healing, eh? But she said, I was raped by a motorcycle gang. Isn't that something? And God brought us guys, these real wild looking guys, like I see Kirk down here and the guys and that. And you know, honestly, you guys, when you see a Christian biker, don't look at him and say he looks like a piece of garbage or a piece of scum. Okay? It's what's on the inside, guys. It's what's on the inside. Too many people, they judge on the outside. Oh, I don't know about that guy. I don't, and you know, speaking of that, one of my buddies uh, just passed away, Roddy. Uh, and it was hard. I never rode a lot with him, but we did ride. And uh, Tammy had phoned me up and she said, you know Roddy Taylor? And I see, yeah, and she said, he passed away his heart. 48 years old, guys. And uh, when I went in there and he was laying in the casket, he had his biker stuff on that. And Bonnie says, you okay, hon? As I hate seeing a biker laying in a, co laying in a coffin. And uh, anyway, and Bill Schrader, another friend of mine. Dave and Dave hung around him too. Called him Mini Wolf. He was like over 300 pounds. And he passed away, and you know, his sister asked me if I'd go and share at the funeral. And some scripture and that, and it's like, I'm standing up at the front there, and God's saying, Lust, look what's in front of you. And I, okay, a lot of street people and everything. So I, I shared a gospel message, and some different people come up, and they said, Les, I'm so glad that you shared salvation. And anyway, um, uh, I was walking around after, and this Christian girl came up. She said she was a Christian. Well, I know she was a Christian. But she said, how could you get up there and talk about salvation? He's in hell. I said, are you God? I said, are you God? You know, I remember Pastor Don Mills when he was here. And Luigi that I was talking about before. Uh, I told Don to pray for Luigi. And uh, he said, what's up, Les? I said, he's dying. So I said, I want to get down and see him. And he said, Les, did you get down to see Luigi? I said, no. And uh, I said, he passed away. And he said, uh, uh, Les, he said, I want to tell you something. Now listen, he said, listen to me. You weren't there, but God was. Okay? I said, okay. Anyway, uh, I was going to say, yeah. I was painting outside of New Hamburg the one day. And right at this place, the guy across the street, the person had come up and said, his brother shot himself just that morning. I knew this guy. 
So I saw him, he said, I can't talk to you right now, Alice. But then he came out. And I said, hey, man. I said, I haven't got a lot of words right now. I said, but you know something? You weren't there, but God was. He looked at me, he goes, oh, man. He went in the house, he came back. He said, last you don't know how those words helped me. Okay, so when some drunk guy or somebody dies, don't be off. Oh, they're in hell for sure. How do you know? I mean, Bill, he laid there for how long, Dave? Three days? Okay, and I had shared Christ with him, and so did Dave. And you know, even Roddy. I, when I went in the funeral home the other day, I felt good, and I felt good about with Bill too. But as I was walking in the hallway at home the other day upstairs, and the Holy Spirit said to me, don't you remember last you gave him a Bible? Yes, he was in my Bible study. Just a young guy. And I had said to him probably about five or six years ago, Roddy, you still got that Bible? He said, I do less. Okay? So, you, like, all that stuff, we got to trust the Lord. Uh, you know, I got to hunt just a minute here. Yeah, have I got time here? Because I got good stuff here yet. Okay? Um, Greg, get ready here. I'm not yet, but I just I'm gonna I'm gonna share this with you about my sons. They were in car accidents. And I pray for my sons all the time. Mark, he's not walking with the Lord, he's in London. But he's gonna come back. And you know, the other day, he phoned me and he told me, he said, you know, Dad, he works for Castle Windows. And he said it was raining. And remind me to go back where I was, what I say about this car thing. <clears throat> but uh, was that Castle Windows? And then he said, well, he said he had the afternoon off, so he goes and he helps some older people and stuff. So he went to this older man's house and the guy's standing there and he said, Mark, come here. So Mark went over and he said, honestly, I felt really different going in the basement, so he went in the basement. He says, see, Mark, I, I can't work anymore. My hair gone. He said, I'm sick. He said, I'm dying. And Mark said, Dad, I hugged him. I said, Mark, that's who you are. I said, it's too bad you didn't tell him about a man named Jesus. And Mark was quiet, and he said, yeah, I know what you mean, Dad. But anyway, the one morning, uh, I'm going to, yeah, the one morning, Bonnie and I are sleeping about 5.30, and all of a sudden, Dad! I said, what's wrong, Mark? He says, it was an accident. And I said, are you okay? He says, yeah. He says, uh, he says out by the Baden Tower. He was with you, Mike. So I went down, and Mike was, had blood on him and that. And uh, is that working all right? Okay. And Mike had blood on him and that. And I said, I'll tell you right now, guys, God spared your lives today. And I said, what happened, Mark? He says, well, he said, I swerved to miss an animal. I said, no, you're driving like a wild man. He had a Honda that was all done up, was all lowered and everything. Eh? And you know what he did? He went, you're going behind the Baden Tower, and there's a hunk of metal there. Eh? The front, he got lost, and the front bumper grabbed it. He went into the air three times. He said on the second spin, his seatbelt broke. They came down. They missed the post boat that much. They came down upside down. And anyway, the, the <clears throat> fire department came that morning, and uh, they picked Mark and, and Mike up and took him away. But anyway, I said, Bonnie, I'm going to go see where the car is. So we went out. Bonnie said, where do you think? I said, I know where it is. So we went out, and there was an OPP standing there, and he's like this. Somebody you know? And I said, yeah, my son. He said, let me tell you something. There was somebody in the front seat with those boys. Uh, Greg, the white car. There you go, guys. <laughs> yeah. And they came out of that, and his seatbelt even broke. So listen, you young guys, you want more entertainment? How do you like that one? How do you like that? Then another night. God wants me to share this with you guys. Build you up. Then another night, I was at the arena, the old arena. The guy came in and says, Hey, Sammy, uh, Shane was in an accident. I said, whereabouts? He said, Bright Highway. <clears throat> so anyway, I asked Shane what had happened. He said, Dad, he said, I went, I was, did, were you coming from Kalen, Shane? Yeah. 
Anyway, he went around these, it's like these bends and he lost it, it was ice. He said when he went out and he spun around, he said the car, it just went out of control. And he said, dad, I was heading for this tree straight on. He said, I know it would have broke my neck. He said within a second, the car turned and went in the side. Red car, Greg, right? there it is. And you know it, Shane, and you know what? See, Shane didn't tell me, he was telling me what he'd been walking with the Lord. I said to him, what were you into, Shane? He said, Dad, I know I was treating my wife around. Right I said, yeah, let's start now. Remember that, Shane? Yeah, right in the living room. I said, this is it, man. Let's do it now. That's what I'm saying to you guys, don't play. Don't play. You know something that says in John 10, 10, the thief has come to steal and to kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and to give it more abundantly. Amen? Jesus. Jesus. I'll just tell you about this one thing and then I'm going to I'm going to move on here. Uh, this is how much God cares about you. It's a small thing, okay? But this is how much. Mark had bought me a hat, okay? And I always have that hat on the back of my bike when I when I take my helmet off and I put it on. <clears throat> so, Brian and I were out, and I got home and I said, Boy, I can't find my hat. I said, It must have blew off. And that, that Mark gave me that hat. And she says, Should we go look? I said, Yeah, look, we'll pray. So we prayed. It was very important to me. So we went out and we looked, we looked. We went up uh, up Stratford, down the back road, St. Mary's, all. And I said, Oh man, there it is. It was a dead crow. <laughs> I thought, man, I, I got it. I got my hat. No, I didn't. <laughs> so, so anyway, anyway, uh, we went. We got back home, and Bonnie says, "Honey, I think I know where it is." I said, "Well, why didn't you tell me then?" So we went up by Shakespeare. She stopped here. So I stopped. She walked back. She goes, "She had my hat." Like that's how much. That's how much, guys. God cares about even when I'm working on my bike, I was sharing with the with the with the guys at the at the men's fellowship and that. Like when I lose a bolt and I'll say, God, I don't, I don't know where that is. All of a sudden, boom, there it is. <laughs> you know? And the littlest thing, guys, that's what he cares about. The littlest thing. You know, even my brother over here, Douglas, the testimony he gave. How he had this thing in his throat. Amen, Amen Douglas? Amen. And the doctors, they didn't know what to do. He coughed the one day and this thing came out all bloody and yellow. It was out of its throat. Whether it was cancer or what it was, it was gone. Amen, Douglas? That's the God we serve. <laughs> Praise the Lord, man. You can say again, Douglas, right? Amen. Anyway, I'm just going to Get uh, the band up here. Sorry if I held you guys too long here. Do you want me to drum? Uh, <laughs> the beat will be way off. The, it'll be way off. <laughs> My brother, I'm going to get your name right. Aaron, right now. <laughs> Rome, I know, I know, I'm teasing him. <laughs> Roman, this, this song that Roman is going to sing, and I want, I want that picture up there, Greg, with where he's holding, the guy's holding, or Jesus is holding the guy. That one. Look what he's holding in his hands, guys. A mallet and a spike. Is that you guys today? Are you crucifying the Lord with your sin? Is that you? That's how much he loves you. He's holding you up. That's what he did with me. He grabbed me and he said, Les, I got you. I got you. And you know, the other day, I was just thinking. I was having kind of problems praying in that. And he said, the Lord said to me, as the world would say, Les, got your back. Just came all clear. Got your back. That's the God I serve. 
But anyway, this song, when I play it at home, it's called, He Loves Me. Okay? And when I play it at home, I cry because it breaks my heart. Let it minister to you guys, okay? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, guys, God is calling you unto himself. Sure, you might be going to church on Sunday, you might be thinking you're doing all these religious things, but do you really know Jesus, the Son of God, in your heart and in your life today? Yes, Kirk was kind enough to uh, get us these Bibles. <clears throat> I walked in the other week there and I was talking to Chris to have in the back pocket. It's a Viking Bible. And it's from uh, the Heaven Saints, Barry Mason, ex Hells Angels, South Carolina. Started that, started this club. He got saved. He's with the Lord right now. <clears throat> But Kirk and them had these out at biker shows. And I got 150 Bibles here. And listen, guys, you can take one home with you. They'll be on the table out here. Okay, you can take one home. It's got Barry's testimony in the back. He was a superman. He was a good guy. You know, and he walked away from Hell's Angels. You know, and they threatened him all the time. He'd say, let's pray. I'm getting the phone calls again. We're going to cut you and your wife and family up. We're going to spread you all over Carolina. And he'd be getting this all the time. But he did die a natural death. The Lord took him home. Okay. But bless his heart, the club he started. Amen, Kirk? Cut Kirk and Bernie here. And they got a chapter in London. One of the Windsor was there. Yeah, yeah. You know, these guys need your prayers. Like they're out there, they're out there, and they're putting they're putting it down for the Lord. You know, like uh, there's a lot of ex-outlaw in these clubs, Queensmen. Okay, that's ex-outlaw. Well, that's outlaw, ex-outlaw, but outlaw. And there's a lot of ex-outlaw that are in this club. I talk to different guys, and it's heavy-duty stuff. So, but heaven and hell are heavy, eh? you know. It is right. Like I said, I think it was to Dan the other day. I said, let's be a fireman for Jesus. And rescue the guys out of the flames of hell. Amen. 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 But anyway, right now, guys, <clears throat> there's the picture right there. That's the picture I like. Yes. Someday, man, we're going to leave this earth. And I want Jesus to be able to say to me, Well done, Les. Yep. My good and faithful servant. Amen. Isn't that what you guys want? But the only way you can have that is you got to walk with Jesus, guys. you got to walk with Jesus. And it's not an easy walk. You want excitement? You want thrills and chills? Man, you get to be a Christian. You'll get it. Believe me. Believe me. But I want everybody's head bowed down. No one looking around. No one looking around. I want you to think about it today, guys. Where is my life at? Am I being who God wants me to be. Am I being the man of God that he's calling me to be? And don't worry about your friends, guys. Oh, man, I don't know what they're going to think. Well, what about that party I go to, I got to go to tonight? And, you know, if I tell them I, I, I accepted Jesus, it's a choice you got to make, guys, just like when I stood at the end of my driveway and I made that choice. Today, I'm going to serve God. You know something, guys, I haven't looked back. And it's been over 40 years that I've been walking with the Lord. And I thank him for, for his grace that I get every day and his mercy. Amen. So, anyway, check it out, guys. As Roman is playing here, he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And you know, maybe even in your mind right now, you can picture him standing there saying, Hey, I've been waiting. I've been waiting. Come to me. Come to me today. It's not about me, you guys. It's about Jesus. Amen? Is there anybody here today that would want to raise their hand to accept Jesus? Anyone at all? Okay, I see that hand. See that one? Right on, I'm not going to prolong this, guys. I'm not going to prolong it. Okay? But God will challenge you. He will challenge you. Okay? And that's what he's doing right now. But you know something, you guys? You don't have to put that hand up if you can't do it. 
but I'm going to pray a prayer. Okay? It's called the sinner's prayer. It's a short little prayer. But you can follow me in that prayer. This is the prayer that I prayed at the side of my bed that day I came to Jesus. Now I'm going to pray it. Okay? And you can follow me. You can say it under your breath. The Lord knows your heart. Amen? Dear God, forgive me for I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me. I ask you, dear Jesus, to come into my heart to be my Lord and to be my Savior. And help me, Jesus, to walk with you Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Guide me and strengthen me every day. And help me to be the man of God that you've called me to be. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Father, I pray, Lord, for all these guys here today. <clears throat> I pray your hand would be upon you, every one of each one of them, Lord. May you direct their lives, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that if they're not reading the word, that you would just pull them into that place, Lord, that they need to be. Father, in Jesus' name. You know their hearts, Lord. I don't know their hearts, Lord. You know their hearts. And I pray to God whatever they're going through. I don't know what they're going through, but they're going through different things, each one of them, Lord. So I pray, God, that you would walk that path with them, Lord, that you would hold their hands, Father, and that you will bring them through the, the, the difficult places they're in right now, Lord Jesus. It says, before you call, we'll answer, before I call, you will answer while you're speaking. While I'm yet speaking, you will hear. So before we call you, you know already, Lord, what's already done. You've done it. So I'm believing these guys to surrender over to you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if there's anybody, the altars are open, guys. If there's anybody that wants to come up for prayer or anything like that, come down here now. We'll be glad to pray with you. Wasn't that wonderful, guys? I'd like all of us to stand together. I just want to pray for Les because um, when you share a message like this, the enemy will want to come and rob and steal and destroy from what's taking place here. We just want to seal the words of what God has done yeah. over this morning. Yeah. You know, there is an army here. There's 159 of us here tonight, tonight this morning, guys. 159 of us. So let's pray for the rest. Father, thank you so much for this wonderful man of God that you have called to share the gospel, the living word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for what you have done in his heart and in his life. And how that has spread through mm -hmm. out this community, out this province, mm -hmm. throughout this nation, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you for what you have spoken into Les's life. And for what we have heard here this morning. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would surround us mm -hmm. with your angels and protect Amen. the word that has Amen. been planted into all of our hearts here. Amen. Lord, and that you would continue uh, to keep right. Les so bold for you, <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Oh, wow. He's going to just, if we pray more fire on him, he's burn up, Father. That's what we wanted to see him. He wants to burn up for Jesus, not rust out for Jesus. Amen. He wants to be on fire for you, God. Continue Amen. to burn. Amen. So burn uh, in his heart and his life and all the words that we have heard this morning. May they continue to be fanned into flame. All the gifts that are represented in this room, all the men, God, God touched them. And those that Amen. have given their hearts to you, this morning, Jesus, seal in them the power of the Holy Amen. Spirit. That they would be bold for you to stand up Amen. and to share what you have done Amen. in their hearts and yes. lives, Jesus. Amen. And we thank you. Protect Bonnie and the, and the children and the grandchildren. Keep them all safe, Lord. Surround them Amen. as uh, they would want to continue to love and to serve you. So, Jesus, Amen. bless them. Thank and bless the men now as they, as they travel. Keep them safe. Uh, May we have no white cars or red cars. Amen. Uh, Amen. Uh, keep us safe, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name.
Amen. 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 Amen.